Real life, real stories, life lessons with Esther Joseph. It's our fault. Whether it's going good or bad, it is our fault. If things are going good in the nation, it's the fault of the church. If things are going bad, it's still the fault of the church. It's you and I. We are the cause of everything that's going on in our world. It was only the church that was given the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the works of darkness. Only the church that was given the authority. Welcome to What Matters with Splendiva. Hey guys, Pastor Greg Locke here. Just want to preach a little bit, pray a little bit, and chit-chat from my heart just a little bit. Because look, I've had a gut full of the nonsense that is taking place in our culture. And more so than that, in the church of the living God. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ in America has capitulated and compromised and rolled over to play dead. And we are filled with a spirit of nothing but lukewarmness. You know, I talk a lot when I go around the country about uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. My shack, your shack, and a bungalow. Whatever you call those guys, they stood up for the Lord. But here's the interesting thing. Do you realize that it was not just the Babylonians that were bowing down and worshiping the golden image, the 90-foot solid gold statue that Nebuchadnezzar had set up? You know why the three Hebrew children were there? Because the Israelites, God's people, were in Babylonian captivity. So that means both the church world and the Babylonian world were all falling down to the same cultural nonsense. The same political correctness. And that's what the church has done. And I'm here to tell you, it's time we push back. The scourge of the American church is it's far too American, not enough church, and there aren't preachers that have a stiffened spine and backbone that need to stand up and speak out and boldly proclaim the truth of the gospel. I have said this a thousand times. I say it on every TV and radio interview that I'm on, every Zoom connection. Every day, nearly, I make this statement. Why don't pastors like me stay out of politics? I'm going to tell you exactly why. Point blank and bold. Because if we don't call out corrupt politicians and corrupt, wicked, godless, unbiblical politics, then we're not going to have a platform from which to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, ladies and gentlemen. We've got to stand up. We've got to push back. A bunch of silly man-made mandates, a bunch of non-laws, if you will. Well, Romans chapter 13 says that we got to obey a tyrannical government. Acts chapter 5 says we better obey God rather than men. And the reason we got so many popsicles in the pew is because we got far too many polar bears in the pulpit. And we need some men of God to quit being cowards and to quit laying down and rolling over and just listening to what a bunch of bossy deacons tell them and what mad, upset people in the church have to say and what their community has to say. And they better get a hold of Almighty God and say, look, I'm going to fast, I'm going to pray, I'm going to stand on that platform and I'm going to preach the Word of God. If it chaps the height of the devil, if everybody leaves, if all the nickels and noses walk out, it doesn't make any difference. We're going to stand before God, not man. Romans 1 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we've got far too much nonsense going on in our churches. We don't have a them problem. We don't have a their problem. We have a us problem. If my people, not them, if my people, which are called by my name, God says, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Church, we've got to repent. It's time to fight back. Quit being silent. Quit being a coward. Quit being afraid. Quit just complying with all the foolish rules and regulations that mean nothing to God or His kingdom whatsoever. I am convinced the reason God is blessing this tent, this large tent I'm in so mightily, is because people are finally saying, look, there's somebody that's saying it. There's a church that's believing it. We have people that fly here every week from California, from Oregon, from Texas, from Pennsylvania. Every single weekend, 12, 15, sometimes 20 states are represented because people are like, wow. Wow, it's a fresh breath of air because look, we're going to fight back. We are not putting up with tyranny. We are not putting up with nonsense. If you don't believe the church is under persecution, you are not paying attention. Get your head out of the sand. Quit living in this foolish, utopian, socialistic society that CNN and the media has painted for you. We're in a battle. This means war. That's why we pray the way we pray. If we learn to pray, pray properly, pray well, I'm telling you, the prayers that we pray in this place, people are like, those are strange prayers. Yes, and they are for strange times. Those are strange prayers, and yes, they are for strange Christians. Strange Christians. Most of us in this day, we are very strange Christians. Abnormal. 
Not what the Bible said Christians should look like or act like or behave like or we don't carry the power and the fire that the Bible expects us to carry. So that is why we pray these prayers. This singular prayer, anything in sight of me resisting God, come out. That prayer can practically change your whole Christianity. That one prayer point. Because when you pray that prayer, the slumber jumps out. When you pray that prayer, the mindset of Egypt jumps out. Because those are things that are resisting God. When you pray that prayer, Babylonish programming leaves. When you pray that prayer, foundational powers that say nobody in your generation can serve God leaves. That singular prayer. When you pray that prayer, the things that have been bothering you, the cares that you've carried on top of your head that have, over, that have covered what you're supposed to do as a child of God, they leave. That singular prayer. When the Lord gave me that prayer upon a few years ago, that one prayer has changed the lives of many people. That prayer point. Anything resisting God inside of my life. That's how I say when you pray that prayer, knock your head. Because some of us, we have our head is what they call knuckle. Amen. Some of us need to pop our head. Because you see, <laughs> your soul is your mind, your emotions, and your thinking. There are a lot of us that have been fed food, sacrificed to idols. We have gone and drank Starbucks with their marine. <sighs> We've gone and eaten food. We've gone and eaten in Chinese places with dragons. When you start hitting your stomach, all those dragons that came in from the Chinese restaurant the last time you ate, you find yourself burping and yawning. Because you see, the food itself went out, but the spirits kind of hung around. You find yourself burping and yawning and farting as you hit your head. If you pray this prayer seriously, that spirit of slumber, that's say you should not read the Bible, jumps off. If you pray this pray prayer properly, you know how sometimes you can read whole chapters of the Bible and you don't remember what you read. You all don't be looking at me as if it, it's never happened to you. Two, three, four pages and then you're like, whoa, what was I reading? Because the minute you started reading the Bible, your soul got disjointed. The devil is like, oh, don't, don't read that, don't read that, don't read that. When you pray that prayer, the voices that talk to you will be silenced. People think that they, all, they only hear from God or they hear from themselves. No, you hear three voices at all times. The voice of the Lord, the voice of the devil, and the voice of the, and, and, and your voice. When you're sitting in church and something keeps saying that man is getting, man, this is too much, man. Who, who do you think is talking? You think it's you? No. Let me ask you something. Do you think it's the Holy Spirit telling you that you've sat in his presence for too long? You're sitting in, the, in, 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 in church and your brain is wandering. You're thinking about what you want to go cook. You want, do, what do you th who, who do you think is telling you about what, what are you going to cook today? You all think that because you're in church the devil is not around? Apostle Peter stood right in front of the Lord Jesus and the devil spoke through him. Right in front of our Savior. God, did Jesus, the Lord had to tell Peter, get thee behind me, devil. Satan, get thee behind me. And he's looking at Peter. I'm sure Peter is thinking, Lord, why are you calling me Satan? Because he saw the Spirit speaking through Peter. If you see the spirits that are talking to you, that are trying to take you away from God, the ones that are making you get all caught up in your flesh. The ones that are making you get all caught up in the world. The ones that give you this mind. Do you know, over, I think, pretty much about 60% of, of Christians interpret the Bible and Christianity the way they see it. Not the way the Bible sees it. These are things that are resisting God. And if we pray seriously, that one prayer point, it can change your whole destiny. It can change your mindset. It can set you on fire. And when you pray it, pray it with, with intent. Don't just pray it like, oh, the pastor said we should pray and I'm just rattling up. Don't pray it like a vain babbling. Pray it with your heart, your soul, and your spirit. That you want things that are resisting God in your life to live. Every one of us in this place needs that prayer. If we didn't need it, our world would not be so crazy. So don't sit there and let that religious spirit tell you, well, I am pretty much good. No, you're not. I am not either. Because if we were good, our world would not be so crazy. Hallelujah. So we need to pray knowing that God, let me tell you something. The God kept you and I at this time, in this season, in this very hour, in this generation, and gave us charge over the world at this time, in this season, in this generation. 
If we do not take charge over the world, we have missed it. The Bible says what we bind on earth, God binds in heaven. What we lose here on earth, God loses in heaven. That means what you and I allow in our generation is what the devil is going to do or what God is going to do. It is our fault. Whether it's going good or bad, it is our fault. If things are going good in the nation, it's the fault of the church. If things are going bad, it's still the fault of the church. It's you and I. We are the cause of everything that's going on in our world. It was only the church that was given the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the works of darkness. Only the church that was given the authority to turn around darkness. Only the church. Not the world, not politicians, not anything. The church can pray and change the minds of politicians. The church can pray and turn around the things of the world. The church can pray and bring down strongholds. The church can pray and scatter the plans of the enemy in the nation. Do you realize how much power God put in you and I? How much responsibility for our world he gave to us? Our world is perishing because you and I are busy playing pat cake with the devil. Our world is perishing because you and I are busy being jelly back weak Christians. And it's time for it to stop. That is why we pray this prayer. Anything resisting God, come out. That's why we pray the prayer. Anything that followed me here to stop my prayer, to stop me from, to die. You know what I'm saying? We pray those prayers because we know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. Our fight is not with the people you are seeing. We need to pray that prayer to begin to pull down the strongholds that are in our mind. The thing that has exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Exalted itself against the plan and purpose of God for our lives. We need to deal with these things. We need to get ourselves prepared to be warriors, carriers of the anointing, carriers of the glory of God, carriers of his fire, carriers of God's glory in these end times. Hallelujah. I thank you for the revelation, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, YouTube. Thank you, viewers. Thank you. God bless you all. Keep her in prayer. Thank you. Thank you and God bless you for watching. Like and subscribe.